the Marihan. Um, I'll let Fawn know and we're going to stream that talk, but um, Marihan is here if you want to chat, uh, put some questions in the chat. Hi everyone, my name is Minnie Han, and today I'd like to present to you work that I did with Sabine Howard and Paul O'Dowd called Robotic Canvas Interactive Painting on Two Robot Swarms. Painting is a form of art, and art is one of the most powerful methods to communicate ideas and thoughts. And in order to create art, one needs to use tools. So for example, here we can see different kinds of brushes, uh, we can see um, a canvas, we can see a palette, we can even see more than one person collaborating to create art. And the image that emerges from these brush strokes, um, in this case the heart, is understandable by the outside world. And nowadays we have the means to create new and expressive medium to create art. Um, so for example, instead of using paint, we can use a swarm of robots. And this is because we have the ability uh, to produce uh, robots in large numbers. Uh, but in order for robot swarms to be deployable and to be useful in real life, we'd need a way to communicate with them. So we would need a method uh, by which uh, to input information into the swarm and for the swarm to be readable so we can uh, understand the state of the swarm. And this is called human swarm interaction. And art is a, um, an intriguing and an exciting context to study human swarm interaction. And this is exactly the aim of our system. So here is our system, the robotic canvas. Um, there is a swarm of robots and the robots used here are kilobots. Kilobots are small robots that have um, a diameter of three centimeters. They have an ambient light sensor and an LED as well. There's a projector that projects images onto the swarm or GIFs or videos. Um, a human can interact with the swarm uh, through hand gestures or through um, a dedicated set of robots that we call the toolbar. So the system is made of 200 plus robots. There are six interaction modes um, called the painting modes that we developed so that the um, human can interact with the robots. There is feedback system. Uh, so whenever the human interacts with the robots, the robots um, uh, give uh, the human feedback through their LEDs so the human can confirm that their interaction is taking place. And finally, there is multi-human swarm interaction, um, which means that multiple humans can interact with the swarm simultaneously. So now I'm going to present the different six interaction modes, the painting modes. The first one is light painting mode where the robots uh, replicate um, the image uh, projected on them via the projector. And here are a couple of examples. Um, the robots are able to distinguish between three different uh, uh, color groups because their ambient light sensor gives off different waveform patterns uh, whenever it detects uh, one of the colors in these color groups. Um, and then um, we can uh, program the robots to give off any LED uh, value we tell them to based on the colors projected. So for example here we told the robots that whenever they detect the color blue um, they should blink red and blue. And before um, I talk about the rest of the painting modes I'd like to show you um, a performance that we did with the painting modes. So here's a, a quick overview. Uh, there is um, sun uh, sets on an ocean then night arrives, stars begin to show in the night sky, more stars begin to show, and then clouds starts, uh, start forming, and then finally the sun rises again. So let's uh, talk about the interaction modes that made this performance possible. So the light painting mode is the first one where a GIF of the sun set was uh, being projected onto the robots. Then, um, uh, pixel eraser mode is the second mode used where when whenever the robots um, detect a drop in ambient light they turn off their LED. Uh, color uh, pa uh, Palette coloring mode is the third mode um, and it uses 10 robots from the toolbar and each robot um, is called a brush and it holds different color information um, and whenever the robotic um, the robots uh, on the robotic canvas um, are within communication range with the brush they adopt its color so here the user is using the magenta robot to paint a star. Fourth mode is the copy and paste mode where robots, uh, where, where the user can copy and paste 
um, add different areas of the canvas to other areas. So here, uh, when the uh, user keeps the shadow of their hand over uh, the robots uh, for five seconds, they blink red and blue, indicating that they know that they're being selected. Then the pixels follow um, the, uh, the movement of the hand, also for feedback. Then when the user keeps their hand over um, the robots for five seconds, they will blink cyan and yellow, indicating that they know um, they're being pasted onto. Um, and here, uh, two hands are being used simultaneously to show multi-human swarm interactions possible. And then the user uses the cyan brush to paint clouds, um, which is from the previous painting mode. The fifth mode is the undo all mode. And here is the undo robot from the toolbar, which causes a message to propagate throughout the whole swarm to tell robots to reset, uh, which means to go back to light painting mode. Um, which also means that they will uh, go back to responding to the projector. Um, so here the, the user is using the under robot and you can see the signal physically propagating to the rest of the swarm um, as feedback. So there is this red wave. And then finally, uh, the sun rises again. So this is uh, the robots going back to light painting mode and replicating a GIF of the sunrise. The last mode is save all mode. Um, and it uses five robots from the toolbar. Uh, and each of these robots are, uh, they're called memory robots. They change their state um, between uh, save and retrieve. When they're in the save mode, their LED color is purple. When they're in retrieve mode, their LED color is white. Um, and each of these robots um, send a specific message um, that gets picked up um, also it, propagates the signal uh, throughout the whole swarm and then gets picked up by the robots. Uh, and uh, the robots then um, are able to link this message to a specific um, element in an array that they all save. Uh, and then uh, this prompts them to access this element to either save their current LED value or retrieve a saved LED value. And because there are five robots, uh, a user is able to save five different paintings at once. And now that we talked about the interaction modes, I'd like to send um, the message home that it's not as intuitive or as easy to create interaction modes with a swarm of robots due to their large numbers that could be hundreds. Um, this is because there is no central controller that tells each robot what to do or what state uh, to adopt. Um, similarly, a human can't interact uh, or communicate with each robot separately to um, to com uh, to uh, communicate with it uh, messages because that would be unfeasible with hundreds of robots. Um, um, and so in swarm systems in general and in uh, our system in particular, there are two types of interactions. There's environmental and local interactions. Environmental interactions is when the robots respond to their environment. And so the human can then uh, use this um, interaction to manipulate the environment around the robots to um, be able to communicate with them. L um, local interactions um, is when the robots locally communicate with one another um, to try to understand the state of the swarm and, uh, and take decisions. So um, here are the six painting modes um, divided based on which interactions they use. So light painting mode, the human changes the color of the light being projected on the swarms um, to try to send them a message uh, to tell them which LED color value um, uh, to show. And then pixel razor mode, the human changes the ambient light level around the kilobots um, also to tell them whether to turn um, off their LED color, um, their LED or not. And with local interactions, um, so palette coloring, so the human uses a dedicated robot, which is the brush, to send messages um, to the robots to change their LED color. Um, so whenever the brush is in, within communication range with the robots on the robotic canvas, they change their color. So this is a local interaction that the human exploits. Um, the human can use the under robot um, in the undo all mode. So whenever the robots are within communication range with, uh, with these robots, the, the robots then uh, change their um, state. They change their LED color for one second to uh, red, and then they themselves broadcast the message and then go back to light painting mode. 
So their neighbors will, will hear this message. They will turn their LED um, to red for one uh, second and uh, go back to light painting mode. Then their neighbors will do the same and the neighbors will do the same, etc. until all the robots in the swarm hear the message and um, go back to light painting mode. And that's why you see the red wave um, on the swarm. Uh, it's not only aesthetically pleasing, but it's also um, there for human um, feedback so that the human can see that, yes, my message is indeed reaching the swarm. Um, so again, the, the robots work together to propagate this message. Safe all mode is the exact same thing, but instead of a red wave, it's either purple wave or white wave, depending on uh, whether it's uh, safe or retrieve mode. And then uh, instead of going to light painting mode, um, um, it's either save your current LED color or retrieve it. Copy and paste is a special mode because it uses both environmental and local interactions. Um, so whenever the human keeps their hand over the robots for five seconds, the robots understand that, that now we've, we're in the copy uh, mode. So they broadcast a message to their neighbors telling them that if you yourself see a drop in ambient light or detect a drop in ambient light, that means that the human has moved their hand over to you. So uh, show this LED color. And that's how the LED, um, the LED color, the pixels move as the hand moves as the hand moves. Uh, and it's interesting because then the robots use both interactions, local and environmental, to try to figure out where the hand is. And because multiple humans could be interacting at once with the robots, uh, any one robot could be um, hearing the undo all signal, um, it could be uh, hearing the, a brush, and it, it could um, be sensing a drop in ambient light. Each robot keeps um, a list of its uh, 20 closest neighbors, and then it loops over them to see the messages. So it could be um, uh, listening to conflicting messages. Um, so that's why we've implemented a subsumption architecture that prioritizes um, the messages uh, so that ro the robots are able to make decisions um, on which uh, state to adopt. And we've kept the states that involve message propagation as the highest priority states so that the swarm could be um, uh, could update correctly. So in conclusion, we have implemented a system uh, that allows a human to interact with a swarm of robots and to create art and um, uh, methods such as message propagation, local and environmental interactions could be used in other contexts as uh, contexts as well, not just art. So um, any system that involves a human interacting with a swarm um, we would like to take this, uh, our system, the robotic canvas, out to the people so that they can use it, um, such as in public engagement events and in user studies, so we can get feedback and also um, understand more the usability of our system. We would like the robots to move, so currently there is stationary, uh, and if we add robot movement, it won't only be um, that the robots are showing paintings, it could also be that the robots um, form to these cultures and form to these shapes, that would be an interesting behavior. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Um, here is my email. Ple please do reach out with questions, um, feedback, uh, or suggestions. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions and also be happy to get feedback on where you think we should take the system. Thank you very much. Thank you. So much, uh, Marihan. So there's already been a little bit of discussion, so please feel free to keep it going there. Okay, um, next we are going to have Lenny uh, speaking.